research here, they had, and this was all and they had, it was amazing, the picture of the engine, the cross section, and the part that was classified as was deleted. If you've got a, a molecule here that has hit the pot and is equilibrated to the pot temperature and it mixes with the molecule here, you'll get something that's kind of at an average temperature, but it's, if this again hits the pot, it's not doing as much good because it's cooled down. The fan is blowing the air up here and instead of having this, you have lots of holes around the perimeter of the cylinder so that the air is blowing through and creating a zone of very, very good mixing on the top. So there is, should we just pass it around? Yeah. There is a plate like this. It's, the whole thing is open. And the reason they can get away with that is because when you have the forced air shooting across the top, all smoke, all gas go into flame. We, there's all these wonderful things about sun, but there is some, some realistic downsides, and this is where they are. They're relatively weak compared to wood. Um, limited cooking times, anybody who's working with you knows that. There's, as well, people want to cook at 4 o'clock in the morning if they can. Um, weather season dependent, clouds roll in most every place you are, there's definitely a cloudy rainy season that throws it off. And then you usually almost always in the field have to choose between expensive or shabby materials. I am Elizabeth Sipple and I am representing Mercy Corps here at Stove Camp. Um, I am the program manager for Mercy Corps Energy Poverty Program in Haiti. I think I came with this long list of questions and I've been slowly you know just addressing them especially in individual conversations I mean I think that's a real gift of the stove camp because we do group discussions um, but then we also you know we're you know basically any time night or day you can grab someone who you know has been thinking a lot about one of the issues that's important to you and you can say do you, want, do you want to sit down and talk about X? And everybody here is passionate, I would say, about what they're doing. But Stove Camp is, it's been great. It's been a great experience for me. And I know that I'm going to return to Haiti with new ideas, but also new people that I can turn to with a question. Um, and I think that's probably been, you know, it'll be one of the, the main take home um, benefits of Stove Camp. I've just made the, my community of resources much larger. Hi, I'm John Jordan. I live in Victoria, British Columbia, and I'm down here at the Aprovecio Stove Camp, uh, just playing in the mud. And I'm actually trying to sort out some of the larger rocks from this mud, because it's, uh, um, I'm gonna make a stove. In Rwanda, where I, uh, work with uh, a group of Rwandans um, promoting more sustainable living conditions, I found that of all the things that, uh, that we provide there, you know, the better kind of roofing, water catchment systems, raised bed gardens, uh, breeding rabbits, what they love the most is the stove because it impacts their health so dramatically, so quickly. Uh, my project uh, rehabilitates the houses of widows uh, who are raising orphans. My name is Eliman Jiba. I am from Gambia, West Africa. And I'm here today at Aprovecho Stove Tech Institute. Uh, we are studying and uh, researching, and I'm watching and <laughs> trying to see what uh, kind of stoves we can use in Gambia, West Africa. We've set up a non-profit foundation called Nima Swiss Foundation and we are collaborating with Fred Colgan and Aprovecho with Dean and Mike to see if we can uh, uh, bring these stoves to US Africa and help the people. My name is Pat McCardle. I am a member of the board of directors of Solar Cookers International and I've been involved with 
promoting solar cooking and integrated cooking, which is solar fuel efficient stoves and retained heat cooking for the last almost six years. I got involved with solar cooking when I was uh, in Afghanistan for a year for the Department of State. Uh, started building some there just as a because I was interested in it and there was so much deforestation and when I came back from that year I retired from the Department of State and have been very involved ever since in promoting this technology. I met Dean still a few years ago and uh, did a uh, workshop with Larry Winyarski in Mexico in uh, 2008 uh, and learned much more about fuel efficient stoves and have wanted to come to Stove Camp for a long time to see the lab and uh, to be able to propose something like that, some kind of testing standards for solar cooking. So I've learned a lot this week and I'm really glad that I could attend Stove Camp. So, our project was because we realized so much of the world cooks on charcoal, and charcoal is incredibly uh, uh, inefficient to make, uh, uh, we thought there's got to be a way to make it and capture all the gases and so forth that's made in the process and reburn those as our fuel. So, a brief primer on charcoal is you have a con an airtight container, you fill it up with wood, you put a lid on it, you light a fire under it, and you wait for the gas to come out the pipe. When the gas comes out, you stick that into the combustion chamber, and you quit using wood. And uh, what, what we discovered was that, uh, I mean, we didn't even know, we, we'd certainly seen you know, evidence to suggest that this works, but we'd never seen that for ourselves. So I, I, I've never seen this, this, I think it's amazing. So uh, yesterday, the, the, uh, our first attempt failed miserably. We couldn't get the temperatures we needed because it looked just like that. And then we thought, aha, the, the whole idea of a skirt. So we fashioned just a simple sheet metal skirt that then fit around the pot, came back the next day, repeated the experiment, and tripled the temperatures. So we were capturing everything that came out of this stove or out of this pot and running it back through the fire. So we basically, I think if it was tuned properly, there would, you know, we could get very, very close to, to only the only emissions being the wood that it would, that it would take to start it. Uh, and then the idea would be that, that uh, once we had it all worked out, was that we would put some sort of a valve in this line because we felt as though about half the gas we were producing was sufficient to continue the process. And the other half could then be siphoned off. So while you're making the charcoal, you can cook lunch or have a pot of tea or something like that. So, you know, to me, the, the next step would be, uh, can we do this uh, to make gas, to cook food, to be super clean, to turn wood into gas, which then we cook with. And so, and I think that we could make equally good gas out of the charcoal so we would get 100% of the energy from this wood uh, in a burner just like you do in your house right now. And, and that would win the X prize. So uh, that's a million dollar prize coming up and uh, this group could win it, you know? And then the last thing I would say is, what's, what's a better tool for developing to win the X prize? A computer or three people sitting outside just messing around, right? Computers help us to sit on our butts, but to really make appropriate technology for the poor, you sit around and mess around uh, and make something work really well. So all of you remember, you, you are all invited, you know, if the bug bites you hard enough, and if you are seriously going to pursue and solve a problem, we welcome you with open arms. And we, we will help support you. We will you know, make your life as easy as we can. We welcome you to be a part of our community. And, you know, but it has to have bitten you hard enough where you will not stop until you solve the problem. You know, when Ryan came here, uh, I said, well, when can I start paying you? And he said, after I solve my first miracle. <laughs>